Hey, welcome to episode 172 of the Content Creation Made Easy podcast. I am your host, Jen Liddy, and today I'm talking about how to talk to and market to your ideal client, what that really means and why it's important. Um, you obviously have heard of this before. I remember the first time I heard of ICA or niche or niche or audience member, and they kind of all get lumped in together. And you've probably done that ideal client exercise where you've created a fictional character, but I'm actually not talking about niching today. I'm not talking about, um, ideal client or ICA. I'm actually talking about messaging to an audience of people who are your dream people and how to do it and why to do it in a way that's a little bit different than maybe you've ever considered before. So if you have been struggling with your messaging getting clear or your messaging landing with people or people kind of glazing over when you talk about who you help, I think today's podcast can really help you. So let's get going. About two or three months ago, I was in Charlotte visiting my sister and we were talking about her hobby business. So she, she has, my sister like is very creative and has several different things that she does. And she's got this superpower that she actually gives away to, for free to friends, family members, and neighbors. And basically she helps high schoolers get into their dream college. And she kind of does it in a simplistic way that really takes them by the hand breaks down all the research, helps them make decisions all the way through high school so that when it's time to go to college, the college application so much easier for them. It's, she's, it's like amazing what she can do. So every time she talks about this with me, I'm like, Tracy, this is a business waiting to be born. People will pay for this kind of support and clarity because you know stuff that they don't know. And so she's like, I know, I know, I know, but I don't really want to do the marketing. And I was like, uh, marketing is my jam. I love talking about marketing. I love talking about messaging. Blah, 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 blah. We started just dreaming and scheming about what it could be like with her expertise and my expertise and what it could look like and how it would go. And then I got to the point a few hours in where I have to say the fun kind of evaporated because I realized I would have to learn a lot about her people in order to understand them to a very, very deep degree. The, the degree that it would take to actually be able to market successfully for this business. Now, she's got a double audience, right? Because she has to work with teenagers and she also has to really market to parents. But there's a there's kind of like two prongs here. So there's a lot to understand about this um, ocean of people. I really want you to think of the people that are out there who are, you know, you need to know about, like, we want to know them as deeply as we, we like the ocean. I want you to think of it like we're diving in to know our people. And so I thought, oh my God, I don't think I have, I don't have capacity because I'm at the point in my business where I'm scaling and I'm growing. And I thought, I have spent years learning everything about marketing and content creation and strategy and all of the things. I've, I've spent years learning about it and I've spent years coming to know my audience really deeply. And I thought, I don't have it in me to start over. I just don't have capacity. Could I? Sure, I have the tools. I'm going to talk about some of those tools with you today, but I really didn't want to. I don't want to like break off and start another business. Why? Because knowing your audience as deeply as you need to know them takes an incredible amount of time, focus, and energy. Like you want to know your audience so deeply and really thoroughly that you can easily rattle off like, boom, how my ideal client avatar or my audience see themselves? Like how do they describe themselves? What, what resonates with them? Second, how they're, how they talk about their struggles. They have to connect with my words. I need to use words that they understand and connect with and use. So it has taken me years to figure out what are the exact right words that my audience needs to hear from me. And third, you need to understand your audience's desires and goals. What do they want? You can't think you know what they want. You have to know what they want and why it matters to them. So those are the three things that you really want to be able to rattle off like that. Now, I don't have the time to dive into my sister's audience, especially since it's a double-pronged audience, right? But I'm wondering for you, 
when somebody asks you about your audience or your ideal client or who's a buyer for you, can you easily rattle off the deep knowledge about your people? Like, or do you maybe do what I see a lot of people doing, which is creating a very long, maybe technical, in-depth explanation so the other person's eyes kind of maybe glaze over or loll back in their head. Do you speak your audience's language? And if you're not sure, this is something you really have to dive into because this is a big reason why your content doesn't land with people. You're not speaking their language instead of industry jargon or insider language that you might use with other people in your industry, right? And are you speaking clearly in your messaging? Like, I get you. I know why this matters to you. And I'm going to help you achieve it so you can have the goal that you want and really be clear about what that is because it's different for everybody. So I'm not trying to be a jerk about this, but honestly, most people think they know their ICA very well, but they actually don't know them deeply enough. And this creates unclear marketing, fuzzy messaging, murky messaging, and basically it keeps us all in eternal hell when we don't know our audience like so crystal clear. So creating clarity in this exact area is where I begin with every one of my clients, whether you are in my membership or my mastermind or even a private client. Everybody who's begging for marketing to be easier and to work for them, I make them start here. And if you think, well, I did this three years ago, I did this five years ago, Jen, I already know my people because I was my people. I, I'm asking you to hang in with me today because here's why. After going through the pandemic and then 2021, and we're halfway through 2022, people are different. What they want is different. What their pain points are is different. What they're saying about this stuff is different. And if you have been relying on some old marketing information, old interviews, old research that you did in groups, I'm telling you, if you have not done the work to know your clients right where they are right now, you're doing your marketing and then of course your business a, di a disservice. So what can you do to create some marketing ease? I've got three questions to ask yourself. And if you can't answer them, don't freak out. I'm going to break it further down for you in today's podcast. So don't worry. Now, to be able to market to your audience with more ease, you've got to be able to access your response to these prompts easily. First, when you describe who's in your exact right audience or who your exact right audience member is, if you're describing that to somebody, does that other person go, oh, Oh my God, you you need to you need to meet my sister. I know I know exactly the kind of person you're talking about. Or do they go, oh my God, that's me. You've just nailed me. How did you know? Get out of my head. That's what you want people to be saying. Either it's them or it's somebody that they know or they're nodding because they really get it. Now, this is what you want instead of that slow nod, unsure, brow furrowing, eyes glazed over, mm, okay, response that you might be getting. Maybe you're getting a lukewarm reception when you talk about your audience. So that's the first thing that you want to do to make your marketing easier. The second thing you want to do to make your marketing easier is when you are speaking about the struggles of your audience and what their challenges are, and I'm, I, I'm not saying we only need to talk about their challenges, but we need to know their challenges. Um, are you using their language? What I find is a lot of people are using like really generic terms that don't mean anything to your people, that they are not Googling. And you might not know it because you might be so immersed in your own language or your industry language or your, you know, very special you kind of language that nobody else knows what that means. But your content might be flying straight over their heads. Yes, your audience is smart and they are savvy. But your examples and your stories and your words and all of your messaging needs to like hit them right between the eyes. Because if they don't see themselves in your marketing mirror, your marketing is going to stay hard and make you miserable. And it's going to be ineffective. So that's the second thing you want to do is really understand the words that you're using and how they resonate or don't spend time on that. The third thing that you want to do to make marketing a lot easier with your audience 
is know why these solutions are important to them. Do you also speak to that in your marketing? Is it, you know, you want to make content creation easier so that you can have more time to work on one-on-one -on -one with your work one-on-one -on -one with your clients rather than spend all of your time creating content? Do you speak to how it actually benefits them further down the line? Because I promise you, your people do not care about your process. They do not care that they get 12 sessions with you. They do not care that they get three one hour videos with you or that they get three, a lifetime, to, a lifetime supply of candy. Like people don't care about what they get in your process. What they care about is the solution that you can provide them, how you'll make their life, their work, their relationship, their business better, easier, simpler, faster, quicker, whatever it is, that's what you need to be talking about. And you need to be talking about why it matters for them. And what I mean by that is, are you talking about the ripple effects? So if you didn't have to spend all of, for example, if you didn't have to spend all of your time creating content, like waking up every day and going, shit, what should I put on Instagram today? What could you do with that time? Would you have more free time? Would you have more self-care? Would you be working in your business more or would you be working on your business more? It's your job to paint the ripple effects in your content. Your marketing needs to speak overtly to what achieving that goal will get them, not your process. Those are three vital questions that when you know the answer to like that, marketing starts to come easier and is more effective for you. So what if you can't answer those questions, right? Like you might be like, I get this. It makes a lot of sense, but I don't have the answers. This is then where you need to focus your time and energy because it's a complete game changer when you know your ideal client or your audience member or your perfect buyer incredibly well. And you have to be able to describe their problems and the potential, the promise and the outcomes that they're looking for. And you have to do it in a way that's almost better than they can do it for themselves. Now, this is going to be the foundation. It is not sexy. It is not fun necessarily. It does take time, but it is the hinge that everything rests on when you understand this stuff so deeply. You can describe to them how they are dealing or feeling or wanting better than they are able to do it for themselves. And again, you get that result of like, get out of my head. How did you know? How did I know? Because I talked to my people. That is what it takes to have this information. And this is the one thing that almost nobody wants to do to get out of marketing hell is talk with your people. Talk to them directly. I am not talking about using your own experiences. I'm not talking about you going back to your step zero or your step minus 10 and saying, oh, when I was back there, this is how I felt. No, because so much has changed since then for you and for your audience. In fact, it's really hard if you've noticed the, even like the big gurus who talk about this stuff, like they don't remember what it was like to start out in marketing again or start out in building a business. So what makes you think that who you used to be is enough information to talk to your audience today in 2022? So we're not talking about making any assumptions or even reading things just in Facebook groups. If you want to understand your audience so deeply that they are like, oh my God, she gets me. You have to talk to them directly. The words come straight from their mouths. Those are the, going to be the words, I call it marketing gold, that wind up in your content that help people nod and stop their scroll and open their emails and press play on your videos and listen to your podcasts. This is also how you eventually are able to nail down your standout message. When you know what the words are, your messaging becomes so much clearer. When you know what you stand for, your messaging becomes so much clearer. Your messaging happens when you understand yourself so deeply and your place in this business and what your audience wants and you meld those two things together. So I don't care what you call it. Target market research is what it is. You could call it a listening session. You could call it a chat. You could call it a conversation. It's target market research and it is not sexy. Like, you know me, I'm not lying. I'm not going to blow smoke up your skirt. This is what it is. And it doesn't have to cost you any money, but it will cost you time and it will cost you energy. So you want to make sure that you do it effectively so that it benefits your business across every marketing asset that you have.
What we want to do is speak to your people who are sitting in your market. So let's talk about the steps needed to do this so that you can attract the right people, repel the wrong ones, and make marketing just be a lot easier. First, you're going to get voice-on-voice -voice action with people that you feel might be the kind of people that you want to work with. They don't have to be perfect, actually. When you're doing your research, it's really great also to talk to some people who you're like, oh, no, that person's not for me. Oh, no, that person is not going to be an ideal client. Oh, no, this person said this and this and this, and I don't want to go toward that. But I talk to these five people who are more perfect for me, who are what I want to go toward, and so I know I can let go of X and move toward Y. That is fantastic information. Ask the people that you know, it could be like in your immediate circle, but it's even better if it's not. But there are so many ways to do this stuff. But basically, you want to start with asking the people to get on a, a phone call or even a Zoom, which is even better because you can record it or gasp even an in-person coffee. And you're just going to ask them lots of questions to find out what they're thinking about the problem that you solve the industry you're in, the realm you work in, and what they want. You're just asking questions. That's the first step, voice on voice action. Once you have five, 10, 20 people, 20 is a lot, but 20 is an amazing amount of, number, uh, amount of people to do this work with. Once you have those people, then you can pick apart what they say. But we have to do something inside these conversations, and that is step two, which is just listen to what they say. You ask a question, you don't fill in the blanks, you don't prompt them, you just listen to what they say. You don't fix, you don't coach, you don't offer advice, you don't give feedback. They will complain, they will dump it all out and that is what you want. They will tell you all the things that are wrong in this voice on voice action. They will say it with colorful language. They will describe things in a way you never even thought of. And that will be eventually marketing gold for you. But between now and then, your empathic, sensitive, kind natured heart will want to help them. But that's not what these are about. You just have to listen and you are going to move into uh, the, the, the when you listen i want you to understand you're really doing people a service by letting them tell you what's wrong like having a set of ears is incredibly powerful third you want to take notes on every single thing they say do not think you're going to remember it you're not you 10,000 percent will not remember it because what you learn in these interviews will change your life will change your marketing will change your offers it'll clean up your content it'll help you with pricing it'll just help you feel more confident that you're speaking to the right people and it validates the work that you're doing like yes this is a problem and here's how I can solve it or no it's not a problem and I need to tweak whatever I'm going to do in this way to meet this. Now let's talk about a warning that I have about doing these target market interviews. In my first business, which was the brick and mortar fitness studio from 2013 to 2017, talking to my ideal client avatar was the biggest block that kept us from marketing effectively. I was totally filled with bullshit reasons like I don't have time my biggest one was, I, I was that person. I know this person. I am that person. I don't need to speak with them. And also, I don't want to bother people. That was a big one. And all of those excuses kept us in marketing hell. And there were so many mistakes we could have avoided if we had talked to and interviewed and known our exact right audience member and our ideal clients even better. We could have served them better. So getting clarity in this area is job one in creating marketing ease all the way around. And you can get there. It just takes knowing your people to a depth that requires a scuba mask and an oxygen tank. And that's where I want you to start thinking about like, oh, if I just know my audience mem members better, everything in my business will be a lot easier. So you just ask questions and you listen, listen, listen. And I have a whole guide to help you with this. Basically, it's called the Get Into Your Audience's Mind Guide. It is all about coming from an empathic place where you are learning and listening and you go to jenliddy.com slash interview, and you'll be able to download the guide. There's even a training there. There's a short, short video training, but literally I give you the steps from everything I said today from one, how to get people to agree to these calls through the questions that you can ask. It is a gold mine of information. It's jenliddy.com slash interview. Now at the start of my entrepreneurial journey, I want you to know that 
marketing was just like a vague concept to me. I knew that we'd have to do it eventually, but like I barely gave any thought how to do it effectively. And I barely gave any thought into how to do it in a way that worked for me personally. And I never figured out how to do marketing until I was really deep into the inner circles of hell. So I promise you having these conversations is a game changer. And that is why I created this um, piece for you, this, this um, PDF and this training for you, because I know the power that talking to your audience and really identifying who they are, not demographics. I am not talking about like new moms age 32 through 42. I'm not talking about demographics. I'm talking about speaking to an audience using descriptive language that helps them see themselves. It's holding up a marketing mirror so people can identify and say, oh, there I am. And she can help me or he can help me. So what kind of outcomes could you expect? Well, let's go back to my fantasy about working with my sister, right? I realized, like I told you that, nope, I'm not willing to abandon the current business that I have. I'm not ready to jump off this ship and dive into that ocean of an audience. Uh, I just, I actually think my sister probably sighed with relief that she didn't have to work with me because um, honestly, this work is not easy. And to know your audience deeply takes a lot of work. But as I've stated already, it's totally worth it because it helps you know the words to use that your exact right audience will be attracted to. It helps you create a clear standout brand message, stand out in your industry, which is what I know you want for visibility, and also ultimately develop a tailor-made content bank so you never, ever, ever have to think about what to say. Now, these are the foundations to help you create content ease, marketing ease, reduce the confusion, stop feeling like you're in marketing hell. So grab your guide, get into the, get into your audience's mind at jenliddy.com slash interview, and then find out exactly what does your audience need from you. This is the foundational work and the marketing goal that will comfort. It's beyond worthwhile. I promise. And I think that if you can hear the passion in my voice, like if you are stuck in marketing, go back and do this work. It is totally worth your time. Next week, I have an expert coming in to talk about the difference between ideal client and a uh, perfect buyer and your audience member. We're going to like really break down this, this uh, niche myth and this demographics myth that we've been fed. So come back next week. And I really hope that you've taken away something today that can help you and make your life, your marketing life a hell of a lot easier. Bye.